Hey, Nick, have you all seen that? Yeah. Why do you need a fire extinguisher? Because I'm doing stand-up comedy. Oh, okay. that the worst time to sneeze was while you're driving. Turns out the worst time to sneeze is while you're sucking dick. <laughs> now, I never did it myself. It's just that my girlfriend has allergies and like Neosporin's doing nothing for these teeth marks. So I got to tell you guys about it. I've got some anxiety issues. Like every time I'm on my way up here, I'm convinced that I'm going to come up, take the mic, and then shit my pants and pass out. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm worried about that happening anymore. Because if it did happen, that would be the best set I've ever done. I would never be able to do anything else. I would just be that guy. Hey, this is him. This is the one that I told you about. I saw him on that late show from the creepy warehouse. He just goes up on the stage, shits his pants, and passes out. He's such an artist. I wonder if I can find him on Twitter. In fact, turns out you can, but that's not great. So, you know. Now, I got some anxiety issues, you know? Like, every time I'm driving home and I'm high, so like every time I'm driving home, I'm pretty much convinced that every car behind me is probably the police. Yep. Which is, you know, terrifying, because it means my brain has really low requirements for what it takes to be police. Like, have a car, have your lights on, be behind me, you're in, here's your badge. <sighs> Uh, uh, no, it is not. Oh, motherfucker. Okay. Uh, I love video games, but I wouldn't want to be in one. I feel like I'd be the character that has to get escorted to the end of the level. And I'm really not into that. Like, I'm going to get kidnapped by terrorists or dragons or like a strong breeze. There's a bonus level at the end of the game where you just gotta tap the A button really hard to make sure I don't get carried away by an umbrella. <laughs> I feel like video games have prepared me fairly well for life at this point. Like, I love going to these weird, creepy bars that seem to only exist when you're all way too drunk to reasonably get there. <laughs> you go to these places and it's like, okay, this place, should have an autosave out front. Because I want to be able to start over when I catch myself doing cocaine off of a toilet seat. I feel like I should come back to this bar when I've got better equipment and more abilities. Uh, they're the boss level of social drinking. <laughs> You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to bring my own laugh track because I've never done this whole like TV show recording thing before. That way I didn't have to depend on anybody. And like if the jokes were going wrong, I could just play the sound. Like, I figured fire extinguisher and actual fire was probably enough gimmick for one night. You know what my least favorite TV show is? Is Nancy Grace. Because I think that she's really just a cunty owl that somebody taught to talk. That's all she's got going on. My second least favorite TV show, though, is Dr. Phil. Because you know what every episode of Dr. Phil is like? They get some poor drug addict like me, and they bring them onto this TV show, and they have them get yelled at for an hour by a sausage mascot. Like, if I met Dr. Phil on the street one day and he introduced himself as Jimmy Dean, 
I would believe him immediately. The worst part about these shows is they really try and demonize people who do drugs, but really I think you can get away with doing a lot of fucking jobs on drugs. Like, where's, uh, any of you guys have smoked weed before? <laughs> fucking, that's like every person. That's such a non-question. <laughs> <laughs> One light boo. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Yeah, you. You're a CNA? Okay. Can't do that job high. All right. <laughs> My next question was going to be, have you ever gone to work high? Because I think every other job, you can say, yeah, easily. I've come in a little bit more relaxed and slightly more forgetful. Nothing changed. <laughs> There's very few jobs you can't handle, even if you're coming in to work stoned every day. Because most jobs are stupid. That's really what it comes down to. Even if you're a surgeon, if you're just getting a little high, just enough to like straighten your hands, then okay, I'm backing off this one. <laughs> when I was a kid, my absolute dream job, that's been ruined by my weed habit. It's completely gone. I will never be able to be Batman. That's never going to pan out for me. I am vengeance. I am the knight. What was I talking about again? Let's see, vengeance, knight. I am very hungry. <laughs> All right, we'll go over through one more thing. I probably didn't need to say that. That's probably a weird thing to say in the middle of the show, but I'm going to do one more thing. I read this great, great news article lately. In the last 10 years in America, there have been 10 people that got shot by their dogs. I think there's a couple of safety things we can go through on that, right? Like... Leave your safety on if you're going to leave your gun loaded on the floor pointing towards you and you're not going to even give that dog enough walks. At least try a little bit. Give him some exercise. <laughs> I'm also a dog rights activist on the weekends. Fun true story. Not true. Not true at all. <laughs> Most of these incidents happen during hunting trips, right? Which is exactly where I would kill one of my best friends if I was going to do that. <laughs> you know, this goes exactly the same way every time for these dogs. Oh, motherfucker. You remember that time when you threw the ball, but you only pretended to throw the ball? <laughs> I'm pulling the trigger, and I am not pretending to pull the trigger. I've seen old Geller. I know where this is going. Even better, four out of these ten dog shootings happened in Florida. So we're number one again. We got the best beaches, the most days of sunshine, and the most accurate dogs. My favorite is this story down in Pensacola of this guy that he, uh, he had a bucket or a, a box, a box. Who carries things in buckets? That's weird. <laughs> he had a box of puppies and a gun, right? And somehow this guy decided that the best way to get rid of his box of puppies was with the gun, right? You can look this up, I swear this happened. So the guy sets his gun down on the table and leaves the room, presumably to do something just as fucked up, like he just got a text from his buddies Voldemort and Jared from Subway and they're gonna go fist fuck some kids together. I don't know what else draws someone away from their puppy shooting gallery, but I guess that's what it's gotta come down to. Either way, he comes back into the room, and he's got his gun on the table. 
and one of the dogs jumps out of the box, lands on the gun, and shoots that fucker in the chest. Just goes to show, sometimes the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good dog, good dog with a gun. All right, thank you very much. I'm